Good evening, guys. Um, this is Roshane Jones, or Asian Core, or Jake. And this evening, I'm going to show you guys a simple Blender tutorial, especially for beginners, is how to edit your objects using editing mode. And tonight, we're going to make a dice. So what we're going to do, if you can look at it here, it's a simple little dice, all sides, and it's resting on a surface. Now, tonight, we're going to focus not on the material aspect of it, but just to edit the different vertices, faces, and edges. So let's start a new document. Now the first thing you're greeted with is your default cube when you open up Blender, and I have the latest version, which is Blender 2.69, right? Now, what you want to do is, first of all, you're in object mode, and you want to go into edit mode. But before we even begin, I'm going to set my shortcut screencast keys so that you can see what shortcuts I'm pressing. <clears throat> I just press N a while ago, and actually, if you want to do something like this, you'd have to go into your user preferences, your add-ons, and enable the screencast keys right there. All right, so we have our default cube, or cursor, or 3D cursors in the center. So the first thing we're going to do is go into edit mode, and you can always choose object mode here and see the different modes you have, or you can simply toggle by pressing tab. Now, Right now, I have a few things. As it says here, with this particular object, which is a default cube or your mesh cube, you have eight vertices, 12 edges, and six faces. Now, your vertices are these points right here. Your edges, you can see with pretty much two vertices join, creates a edge and a face is, well, that. Now let's start. First of all, we're going to select all sides, and then we're going to go into the Add section, which is Subdivide, over on the left side for the Mesh Tools. Now we're going to subdivide the cuts about four times. Once you've done that, just hit Tab and Tab again to confirm. And I'm using Middle Mouse, you want to just navigate. Now what I want to do is go into Face Selection Mode. Currently we're in Vertex Selection Mode. You can change the mode by doing this, or the shortcut is Control and Tab. And you can simply choose the one you want. Shortcuts make it easier to navigate your interface and your workflow goes a lot quicker. So something about dice to be noted is that the adjacent sides are equal to seven. So where you have one, six will be on the other side, five will have two, and three will have four. So we're just going to go around this quickly and select the sides. And three will have four. And see, I'm selecting the faces, and two would have five. Now, I'm not sure if this is consistent with actual dice, but I know that the adjacent sides are equal to seven, so I'm guessing right now it doesn't really matter. Now, the next thing you want to do is if you notice about dice, they have a little beveled look in terms of the black dots that you see on them. So, what we want to do is actually what they have called is an extrude option, but we don't want to extrude region because that. With all these points selected, we actually extrude everything towards the center. Now we want to extrude individual points. We just click on it, and then we're going to just press Enter. We're not moving anything with our mouse. We don't want to change the shape just yet. But we want to extrude it so that we can create the space in between the dots on our dice. After which, we're going to go and change our pivot point. Now right now it's on median point, and we want an individual origin. So when we're scaling, Rather than scaling like so towards the center, we want it to scale on itself. So we hit individual origins and each side will scale in on itself. Now afterwards we're just gonna hit again extrude individuals and not pull it out but pull it in just slightly. Now you'll see that that works out like this. And what we'll do for now in preparation for the next part of the tutorial is actually create vertex groups. It's where we can pretty much save our vertices for later use. So what I'm going to do is press Ctrl and plus to select the adjacent sides for adjacent faces. And over here in my vertex groups, I'm going to create a new one. Now this part is selected is the, where will be the black part of it. I'm just going to call this black, B-L-A-C-K. And I'm going to assign the black to this current selection. The next I'm going to do is invert. Now, after I'm inverting, now I'm going to just choose to assign 
a new set for the white section HITB and I'm gonna assign this right so if I were to just choose you'd see black section white section now we're not quite done yet because we're just creating the basic shape now you notice that the edges are very square and if I were to go into wireframe view which is Z on the shortcut you will see that the little dots are square what we want to do is get them to be rounder in terms of edges so we're going to use something called an object modifier and to use any object modifier you have to be in object mode so if you were in edit mode get out of edit mode and go into object mode by simply pressing tab now we'll go to this little blue wrench over here on the right side and choose add modifier we're going to choose subdivision surface as you can see it's getting a little smoother or round up but the edges aren't exactly smooth nor the shading so we can increase our subdivision by just a few now if something to note about the subdivisions in terms of view here we have view is equal to 3 this will show you how much subdivisions are going to be activated inside our current viewport but if you want to see how much in your render when you're finished rendering you can always set it to be the same as the viewport or if you want an increased subdivision in the actual render but not in the viewport you can always increase the render amount now you will see that there are quite a few what they call faces here and you can see them quite visibly if you want to turn that off or rather give you a better shading you have two types of shading typically found in 3d programs you have the flat shading which is what we have now and you have the smooth shading which kind of just smooths it out now we have our actual dice shape and these edges I would consider are just a little bit too protruding so what we're going to do is just go back into edit mode and edit them just a little bit so going back into vertex selection mode we're going to select the edges of each side like so just navigating around and here and also last part here before you do anything else you want to change your pivot point again back to median so we can scale it in just a little bit to the center just scale it in like that just a little now what will happen now your edges of your dice are much smoother now this is just how you model it in the next tutorial what we're going to do is just take the same dice and we're going to put some um, materials on it so we'll get the whole dice look so the dots will be black the um, white area will be white and we'll probably rest it on um, a wooden surface or something but for now what I'm going to do is to add a new material a plane and you notice our 3d cursor is right on the center and if for instance you were working with this and you somehow moved it away from the center you can press shift and s and choose cursor to center to position it back the 3d cursor inside blender is where any of your object that you're creating will appear so it's very important to know how to position your 3d cursor typically i would suggest using a front view or a side view and a top view so you can always know where it is and best to use orthographic view when you're doing that which is numpad 5. all right so let's just add a plane you can hit spacebar and simply just type add plane and just scale it out now if you want to look in our camera view just for now you can just hit zero on our numpad and this is the current view we have later on we can just rotate it scale it down do whatever we want with it and then we'll have a nice little scene so that's it for this little tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something.